July 4th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 2 Chronicles chapters 8 and 9 from the Old Testament After twenty years during which Solomon built the Lord's temple and his royal palace, Solomon rebuilt the cities that Huram had given him and settled Israelites there. Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and seized it. He built up Tadmor in the wilderness and all the storage cities he had built in Hamath. He made Upper Beth Haran and Lower Beth Haran fortified cities with walls and barred gates and built up Baalith, all the storage cities that belonged to him and all the cities where chariots and horses were kept. He built whatever he wanted in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and throughout his entire kingdom. Now several non-Israelite people were left in the land after the conquest of Joshua, including the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Their descendants remained in the land. The Israelites were unable to wipe them out. Solomon conscripted them for his work crews, and they continued in that role to this very day. Solomon did not assign Israelites to these work crews. The Israelites served as his soldiers, officers, charioteers, and commanders of his chariot forces. These men worked for Solomon as supervisors. There were a total of 250 of them who were in charge of the people. Solomon moved Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace he had built for her, for he said, My wife must not live in the palace of King David of Israel. For the places where the ark of the Lord has entered are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt sacrifices to the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built in front of the temple's porch. He observed the daily requirements for sacrifices that Moses had specified for Sabbaths, new moon festivals, and the three annual celebrations, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Temporary Shelters. As his father David had decreed, Solomon appointed the divisions of the priests to do their assigned task, the Levitical orders to lead worship and help the priests with their daily task, and the divisions of the gatekeepers to serve at their assigned gates. This was what David, the man of God, had ordered. They did not neglect any detail of the king's orders pertaining to the priests, Levites, and treasuries. All the work ordered by Solomon was completed from the day the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid until it was finished. The Lord's temple was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion Geber and to Elat on the coast in the land of Edom. Huram sent him ships and some of his sailors, men who were well acquainted with the sea. They sailed with Solomon's men to Ophir and took from there 450 talents of gold which they brought back to King Solomon. When the Queen of Sheba heard about Solomon, she came to challenge him with difficult questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a great display of pomp, bringing with her camels carrying spices, a very large quantity of gold, and precious gems. She visited Solomon and discussed with him everything that was on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. There was no question too complex for the king. When the Queen of Sheba saw for herself Solomon's extensive wisdom, the palace he had built, the food in his banquet hall, his servants and attendants in their robes, his cupbearers in their robes, and his burnt sacrifices which he presented in the Lord's temple, she was amazed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your wise sayings and insight was true. I did not believe these things until I came and saw them with my own eyes. Indeed, I didn't hear even half the story. Your wisdom surpasses what was reported to me. Your attendants who stand before you at all times and hear your wise sayings are truly happy. May the Lord your God be praised because he favored you by placing you on his throne as the one ruling on his behalf. Because of your God's love for Israel and his lasting commitment to them, He made you king over them, so you could make just and right decisions. She gave the king 120 talents of gold and a very large quantity of spices and precious gems. 
The quantity of spices the Queen of Sheba gave King Solomon has never been matched. Hiram's servants, aided by Solomon's servants, brought gold from Ophir, as well as fine timber and precious gems. With this timber, the king made steps for the Lord's temple and royal palace, as well as stringed instruments for the musicians. No one had seen anything like them in the land of Judah prior to that. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba everything she requested, more than what she had brought him. Then she left and returned to her homeland with her attendants. Solomon received 666 talents of gold per year, besides what he collected from the merchants and traders. All the Arabian kings and the governors of the land also brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 measures of hammered gold were used for each shield. He also made 300 small shields of hammered gold. 300 measures of gold were used for each of those shields. The king placed them in the palace of the Lebanon forest. The king made a large throne decorated with ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. There were six steps leading up to the throne and a gold footstool was attached to the throne. The throne had two armrests with a statue of a lion standing on each side. There were twelve statues of lions on the six steps, one lion at each end of each step. There was nothing like it in any other kingdom. All of King Solomon's cups were made of gold, and all the household items in the palace of the Lebanon forest were made of pure gold. There were no silver items, for silver was not considered very valuable in Solomon's times. The king had a fleet of large merchant ships manned by Hiram's men that sailed the sea. Once every three years, the fleet came into port with cargoes of gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. King Solomon was wealthier and wiser than any of the kings of the earth. All the kings of the earth wanted to visit Solomon to see him display his God-given wisdom. Year after year, visitors brought their gifts, which included items of silver, items of gold, clothes, perfume, spices, horses, and mules. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses and 12,000 horses. He kept them in assigned cities and in Jerusalem. He ruled all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as plentiful in Jerusalem as stones. Cedar was as plentiful as sycamore fig trees are in the lowlands. Solomon acquired horses from Egypt and from all the lands. The rest of the events of Solomon's reign from start to finish are recorded in the annals of Nathan the prophet, the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and the vision of Iddo, the seer pertaining to Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Solomon ruled over all Israel from Jerusalem for 40 years. Then Solomon passed away and was buried in the city of his father David, his son, Rehoboam, replaced him as king. God, I've always loved the story of the Queen of Sheba. How it was so fascinating that here she would come with full entourage, approximately 1,500 miles, to see King Solomon. And more importantly, that she had heard about him all that distance away that she had heard about his God who gave him this wisdom and she wanted to come and see it for herself. How amazing would it be that somebody 1500 miles away from me would actually know that I am your child, that I am Christian, that they can come to me and talk to me about you and that I'll pray with them and, and show them grace. How amazing would that be? God, I just pray for everyone today to be like King Solomon. N not the whole taking on foreign wives part, but the fact that in his business of being king, first and foremost was the fact of, of his reputation of honoring you, of being always really clear that, that his knowledge came from you. It was a God-given gift. And here's this queen 1,500 miles away who, who has heard about it. So God, first and foremost, I pray that in our day in and day out lives at work at school hanging out with our friends at home with our families 
that people without a doubt in their mind would know that we are your children, that all of the things that we have in our life are because of you. And second, that our reputation would precede us, that people coming into conversations with us would already know these things about us, that we would be open opportunities to talk about you, to have them safely come to us and ask us questions and, and love them. Love them like you already love them, God. God, allow me to be that type of ambassador for you. Allow me to always put you first in my life. Allow, allow me to, and remind me, to always put all the gifts you've given in my life first and make it very clear that they are gifts from you. And the only reason that I have the opportunities I do today is because of you. God, thank you for this. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to be your disciples, to entrust in us to go out and share the word about you and your son and forgiveness and the Holy Spirit and prayer and grace and mercy and even stories about the Queen of Sheba. You are just amazing, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.